Hello my dear friends, in today's video you will learn how you can create this incredible presentation in PowerPoint. We'll be using beautiful animated icons, hyperlinks and more transition to create this fully functional and clickable interactive menu that you can use to navigate your slides. And by the way, this video is inspired by the most liked comment from my last video by Yash who requested a PowerPoint about India. So here you go Yash, I absolutely enjoyed creating these slides and I hope you like them as well. So please everyone, feel free to leave a comment below this video and who knows, maybe your idea will be the topic of my next video. And now let's jump into the tutorial. And first of all, I want to say huge thanks to Lord Icon for providing these lovely animated icons and sponsoring today's video. Later on, I'll show you how you can get these awesome icons as well. And my PowerPoint version is Microsoft 365 and all of the links to fonts and photos are in the video description. And now my friends, let me show you how you can create this incredible presentation as well. So let's just scroll down and let's find a fresh blank new slide where we can start working from scratch. And first of all, let's just change the slide background fill of this slide to something dark. For example, absolutely black. That's looking beautiful. And next, let me show you how we can design this blurry section that we have here at the top of the slide. And to create it, first of all, let's insert a rectangle. Let's go to Insert Shapes. Let's grab the Rectangle tool and let's just draw a rectangle. Let's align it to the top left corner of the slide. Let's make sure that this rectangle has height of 8 cm and let's stretch it until it covers the whole slide, just like that. And now we'll be using this rectangle as a photo mask. So let's find a beautiful photo that we could use. Let's use this beautiful photo of Taj Mahal. Link is in the video description if you'd like to get this photo as well. And now let's just copy the photo and let's paste it into our slide. And let's make sure we send the photo to back so that we can see the rectangle. And now let's select the rectangle and let's add some transparency to this guy so that we can see the photo below it. So let's just add some transparency to this rectangle, that's nice. And now we can basically grab the photo, so let's select the photo and let's just move it upwards until we're happy with the area that this rectangle covers, okay? So now let's uh, first select the photo, hold down the shift key, select the rectangle. Now let's go to shape format, merge shapes and let's choose intersect. And this way we have precisely cropped the photo to the area of that rectangle, that's nice. And next, my friends, let's do a couple of adjustments to this photo. So first of all, we can drop down the brightness. Let's insert minus 20% and let's add some contrast, 20%. That's looking good. And now let's jump into the artistic effects and let's add the blur effect. Okay, here it is. And I'll be going with maximum 100 points or 100%, okay? Because later on, we'll be adding some text on top of this photo and this way, the text will be much more readable. So let me just grab this uh, text box from my previous slide and let's copy it over here. Okay. And if we wish, we can select the photo and we can adjust uh, the photo inside of the cropping area. So let's just select the photo. Let's move it slightly upwards. And now this text is much more readable. That's looking beautiful. And the font that I'm using is called Playfair Display. Link is in the video description. And next, my friends, we'll have to insert a couple of circles. You can always hold down the shift key to draw a perfect circle. But we can save some time over here. Let me jump to my previous slide. And let's copy these three little circles with those text boxes as well. And let's paste these guys into our slide. So as you can see, one of these circles is the active circle and the rest of these circles are inactive circles. And let me quickly open up the format shape pane so that you can see what kind of settings I was using. So first of all, I was using a solid white fill with the transparency of 90%. And for the line, I was using a solid white line with the thickness or width of two points. And additionally, to make this circle glow, I have added a white shadow to it. Okay, so the shadow color is white, transparency 0%. And for the blur, I have used 10 points. And this way we get that little glow effect. And for those inactive circles, I was using no glow. Fill transparency 90 and for the line width I was using one point with the transparency of 75. And that's how easy it is to create those beautiful circles. And by the way, for those inactive text boxes I have added some text fill transparency. Let me check what was the transparency level. It was 50%. That's looking beautiful. And next my friends, let's jump into the selection pane and let's make sure that we give specific names to all of our circles. 
As you can see, I've already named all of these circles in a specific name. Each of the names are starting with double exclamation marks. And this is just to make sure that the morph transition works as expected. Because sometimes morph transition mixes up the elements that you'd like to animate. And in those cases, using double exclamation marks at the start of your element names really helps to solve any morph transition problems. And next, my friends, let me show you how we can create a little arrow that will indicate the active section or the active bubble. And once again, to save some time, let me copy this guy from my previous slide. Let's copy it over here and let's ingroup a couple of times and let me show you how this guy was constructed. And first of all, we have a couple of lines, okay, and a simple triangle. And now let me quickly show you the settings that I was using for these lines. So line color is white, line with two points. And to make those lines glow, I have added a white shadow with 10 points blur. And that's the whole secret. Now let's move those lines to the edges of the triangle. Let's select all of these elements. Let's group them into a single group. And now let's just position this arrow somewhere over here at the bottom edge of the photo. And let's make sure it is center aligned with the first active bubble. That's nice. Okay, my friends, so since we have three circles and since we want to make them clickable, let's make sure that we have enough slides. Let's add two more slides and this way we'll have three slides in total. So the first slide is going to be for the first bubble, the second for the second bubble and the last slide for the bubble number three. Okay, and let's make sure that all of these slides are using morph transition and for the transition duration I'm using 0.7 seconds, okay? And now let's select the first circle, let's go to insert, let's click on link and link it to our first slide, which is in this case slide number 15. But let's say it is our first slide, so let's link it to slide number 15. Now let's select the second circle, let's link it to slide number 16. And to make it faster, we can hit Ctrl K to open up the link menu. And let's link the last bubble to slide number 3, okay? And now let's hit Ctrl A to select everything on this slide and let's hit Ctrl C to copy. And now let's paste everything on the second slide. That's good. And on the second slide, let's do a couple of adjustments. Now let's move this arrow one step to the right. And now let's make the middle circle the active circle. And for that, we can use the Format Painter to quickly change the formatting of those circles. And as well, let's make sure that the middle text box is now the active text box. Okay, now everything is looking beautiful. And now let's do the same steps for the last slide. Let me adjust the arrow position, the active circle, and I'll catch you in a second. All right, slide number three is ready and let's jump into the selection pane and let's make sure that our circles are still using those names with double exclamation marks on all of the three slides. And this way the morph transition should work smooth as butter. So let's check it out on the full screen and let's see if those bubbles are clickable. Let's click on the second circle and skadoosh, the animations are working. That's super duper awesome. Okay, my dear friends, and next let me show you how we can add some beautiful animated icons inside of these bubbles. And as I mentioned before, we'll be using beautiful animated icons from lordicon.com. So let's jump to lordicon.com where we can find more than 20,000 carefully crafted animated icons ready to use for your presentations or other digital creations. And as you can see, it has a bunch of free icons and premium icons as well. They're super duper awesome. So let's just explore the library. And over here, we can choose from six different types of icons. So let's go with the first one, Wired Outline, and let's see what it has to offer. So here on the left side, we have a bunch of filtering options. And let's just go with the free icons and let's see what do we get over here. And right away, I see a couple of icons that we could use for our presentation. And now let's just click on this home icon and let's see what kind of customization options do we get. And over here, we have this animation drop down list where we can choose from different animations. So that's super awesome. And currently this little house is spinning around. That's nice. Let's check out a few more of these animations. So here is Morph Neighborhood. As you can see, that little house morphs into more homes. And this is Morph Mansion. That's nice. So let's just go with this loop 3D roll. I think it fits our presentation really nice. And we can as well adjust the thickness of the lines. That's nice. And we can change the icon colors. And since I would like to make this icon completely white, let me activate the dark preview background so that we can see this icon better. And let me set both of the colors to white. That's nice. And now we can click on this button GIF to export this animated icon as a GIF. It will have a transparent background size of 400 pixels and delay of 0 milliseconds. 
that's nice and now this animated icon is being exported as a gif so this is going to be the active state of this icon so let's make sure we download a png version of this icon as well and this is going to be the inactive state okay so let me choose two more icons and let's make sure that we download the gif and the png versions for each of the icons and then we'll jump back into powerpoint and if you would like to have animated icons in your presentations as well, then check out Lord Icon. Link is in the video description. Okay, my dear friends, let's jump back into PowerPoint and let's go to our first slide. Okay, and now let's go to insert pictures, this device, and let's insert all of those GIF images and all of those PNGs. All right. And now while all of these guys are still selected, let me resize all of these icons to 1.4 centimeter. Let's move all of these guys somewhere over here. And now let me just uh, make sure that we can see all of those animated icons and all of those PNGs right next to each other. Okay, so let me align these pencils as well. And once again, these animated icons at the top are GIF images and these static icons at the bottom are PNGs. And now let me select one of those PNGs and let me add some transparency, for example, 75. And this is going to be the inactive state of this icon. And now we can use the format painter and paste the same transparency to the rest of the PNGs. That's looking nice. And now let's make sure that in the same way as we did with circles, we have to give specific names to all of these icons as well. So for this home icon, let's just type in double exclamation mark and icon one. And let's make sure that we use the same name for the inactive icon as well. And let's do the same procedure for the rest of the icons. So this spinning globe is going to be double exclamation mark icon 2. And the last icon is going to be double exclamation mark icon 3. And this way there should be no problems with the morph transition. Everything should work as expected. Okay, my friends, so now all of the icons are ready. We have the animated state and the inactive state for each of the icons. That's nice. And now let's make sure that we position appropriate icons in each of these circles. Okay. So now in the first slide, let's make sure that we move this animated home into this first active circle. Let's make sure that it is perfectly aligned. And now let's move the rest of the inactive icons into those uh, two remaining circles, just like that. And now to make the user experience better, let's make sure that we select all of these circles and let's bring them to front. This way the icons won't get in the way once we will be clicking on those circles. And next, my friends, let's paste the same icons into the second slide. And this time, let's move this animated globe into this middle active circle, just like that. And let's move the rest of these semi-transparent PNGs into the remaining circles, just like that. And once again, let's make sure that we select all of these circles and let's bring them to front so that all of the icons stay below. And next, let's cut all of these icons once again and let's paste them into the last slide. And now let's move this moving pen into the last active circle. And let's add those inactive icons to the rest of these circles. And as you can see, I'm using these fancy shortcuts to quickly align all of the shapes, such as all control down. And all of these shortcuts are possible thanks to the free PowerPoint add-in called Bright Slide. Link is in the video description. Okay, my friends, so we have successfully inserted icons into these three slides. And now let's check it out on the full screen. Let's just click on this circle and skadoosh. We get a spinning globe icon. That's nice. And over here, we can see this spinning pencil. That's beautiful. Once again, spinning globe. And over here, we have this spinning 3D house. That's super duper awesome. As you can see, you can really take your presentation to the next level with some animated icons. And next, let's just add a bit of content to each of these slides. And to make it faster, let me grab some content from my previous uh, slides. So over here, we have two text boxes and a photo. So let's paste them over here. And let me do the same for the rest of the slides so that we have some content in all of the three slides. And by the way, these text boxes and this photo at the bottom have some animations already applied to them. As you can see, we're getting a beautiful wipe animation effect. And if you'd like to learn more about this effect, feel free to check out my last video. And now, my friends, let's play the presentation and let's enjoy the final result. And as you can see, all of these circles are clickable, which means that all of the hyperlinks are working as expected. And inside of those active circles, we can see the animated icons. That's nice. And of course, the morph transition does all of the 
animation magic. And by following the same steps, you can create as many of those clickable buttons with animated icons inside as you wish. In this case, I have 10 clickable circles. That's super duper awesome. And now you know how you could create this kind of presentation as well. And if you have enjoyed watching this video, feel free to watch this video next, where you will learn how you can create one more type of awesome interactive presentation. Thank you for watching, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you there.